Hello and welcome to Flory Models Kit Review Time. Today we've got Heller's 172nd CL215 Water Bomber. To be honest with you, this is one of those kits I've wanted to do for many, many years now. Um, you right remember there was a program out there called Ice Pilots. Uh, fantastic seeing old radial uh, engine transport aircraft and, as I say, water bombers like this being used still. Uh, and after seeing the program, I always thought, you know what, I'd love to build one. The only one that's out there is by Heller. Now, there is two flavours of this particular one. There's the uh, CL215 and the 415. The 415 is obviously the more modern version. It's got slightly different wings and various bits on it, but the noticeable distance, it's got Turbo prop engines. Okay, but I wanted to do the classic radial oily engine, gorgeous sound that these things make, a uh, bomber. So I'm planning on building this one in the near future, but I thought it'd be nice to have a look in the box and see exactly what we get. Now, eyes wide open on this kit, it was originally tooled in 1980. Yes, 1980. So I'm not quite sure what we're going to find inside here. It has been reboxed many, many times before. Uh, and I do believe uh, it obviously had the upgrade to the 415. Okay. And then that was reboxed at some point by Ravel did it and then by Italeri. And then it's gone back through Hella once all the way through. One interesting thing to note is the box art here is actually from the original from 1980. It's had lots of other box art ones, uh, but it's come back to this one again. Anyway, in the box, we've actually got, as I said, it's all still sealed and nice and everything else like that. Hella's usual way of doing things, so it is these kits. So you've got your number for this one is 80373, uh, okay? And then on the back, we've got obviously the markings for it. So as I say, we've got the various ones down in here from obviously we've got the Spanish and the Greek and privately run and things like that in there. We've got some of the size dimensions down here as well. So it's saying it's basically about 40 centimeters across and uh, really 28 centimeters long, okay? Paint call outs just down in there, but as I said, you'll probably be going down your own route. Now, as you can see, this is all nice and shiny because it is still in its cellophane seal, which is something deeply satisfying taking this off, okay? So, there we have it. So it's that usual thing for the unveiling moment. Oh, oh my lordy, it is what I thought. Okay, so to be honest, I wasn't expecting it to be that gearish, but hello, here we are. All right, so we've got one bag with all the parts in there. Then we've got a giant decal sheet, which actually, that looks really, really nice. Okay, so have a good look at that in a moment. And obviously we've got the old instructions down in here. And in the box is a little bit about how to model, which is a weird way of doing it, but hey, whatever works. Okay, so in some ways it's quite nice having an open top box with a flip top, because at least you can put the parts back into it when you're not building it. Sit. Okay, so let's start off with in the instructions. So, it does look like they've been done on a photocopier. Okay, so let's have a look through here. So, as I said, you've got your options right the way through. So, one of the first areas is going to be working on that radial engine at the top. Okay, so it is double stacked. Okay, and with those ones with the nacelles being fitted together. Then you're down into the actual nose gear. So, obviously, I'm assuming this one you can do gear up or down, okay, if you are going to have it sitting on the water or in flight or whichever way you want to do it. So then into the cockpit, so we've got the actual uh, control yokes being fitted down into there. And then we've got some nice details in the inside, which is actually a little bit surprising. But we've got some of the bulkheads, we've got the seats, instrument panel, but down here we've actually got the scoops for the tanks coming up to fill up the actual water tanks. And then obviously the top part being here being the overflow. So that's very nice indeed. Okay, then we've got this sort of usual way of putting it in. Nice to see we've got full internal details, which will be quite nice to see. Then we've obviously got the deck system going through and then this front end. Strange the way they've done that one, but I'm sure there's a reason to it. We've got the different tail being fitted at the top, so that's going to be a large tail fitted up there. Okay, and then down onto the other side, you can see some of the small areas. So we've actually got the scoops being fitted down into there, and then the gear in the downward position. Now it's not showing gear up, but I'm assuming it wouldn't take rocket science to work that one out, okay? So that's one being fitted down into there. We've got the wing sections uh, and the lights and the things like that being fitted on there and onto the other side, as you might uh, expect. And then obviously you've got the actuators down there for the flaps and the control surfaces. 
onto the top end. Starting to bring it all together now. So it looks like it's going to be two halves of wings with a centre spar being fitted in on that one. The tailplane's being fitted. We do have a ladder system as well uh, for climbing up onto the roof. And that one's obviously in the down position. And again, the floats it looks like they are only in the down position. Okay, and then obviously engine cells being fitted up there onto the roof, and then we've got lumps, bumps, props, and things like that fitted down in there. Okay, and then the markings. Okay, so we say some nice markings around in here, very colourful as you might expect. And again, the Spanish one's quite nice with the actual white tail as well. So that's nice to touch. And I think we've got the Greek one down there as well, and then this one as well. Okay, so again, very, very nice job on that one. The decal sheet actually looks very, very nice. You can probably see it there. We've got some really nice uh, bits showing on there. Okay, and if we pop onto the close-up, you can see, nicely printed. No problem that Good, solid colours all the way over. A little bit of carrier film in between, but nothing that looks a little bit overdone or anything else like that. And as you can see, some really very, very nice ones down in there it's actually quite nice okay let's go straight into the clear parts <clears throat> okay so my clear part has come off okay and let's have a actually okay they're not crystal clear don't get me wrong i'm not going to fudge this you can see it's probably got nice scraps and scrapes and stuff but luckily this is supposed to be a workhorse aircraft so you wouldn't expect it to have crystal clear glazing Anyway, maybe the front one you'd hope for, but actually that's not too bad, okay? Again, lots of detail going on there, and once it's painted, it'll all pop through, and you've got the tecker texture as well for the inside, for the soundproofing. Okay, so actually that's not too bad. And then on here, as you see, we've got the domes and the windows and the various things, they're all in the square one. Again, they're not crystal clear or anything else, we're not gonna pretend they are, but this kit is now, as I say, 40 years old. So, down in here, we've actually got the screws. Now, I'm, for the first time, hoping they're raised. Because, this again, this is one of those things where the, the model itself, uh, it's all going to be raised detail. So you sort of want that to follow through. Now, admittedly, the colour is a little bit gearish. But I think it'll just, it's one of those things. You're going to paint and prime and all the rest of it, okay? Make it uh, colour fast and stuff like that. A couple of things that would have been a nice little option, because we've got all that internal detail, is to have the door, if it had been an open one as well. So with these ones, there isn't an easy way of opening them up. So you are just going to have to cut them open if you wanted to. Might be a nice little touch if you are on the ground or in a water diorama to have those open. Okay, so there we go. Anyway, moving around on the closer ones, as I say, if we start here, you can see what I'm talking about. This thing is very much old school, so it is covered in raised detail. And again, actually, it all is. So all the detail on this is raised. The panel lines is raised, but then it's so all the riveting. And again, not that you'll probably see too much, Andy. If we catch it in the light, you can see it is absolutely hammered in rivets. And it is all raised dome rivet, rivets as the real thing. Okay, now I'm just trying to check. It is, it's completely raised details. But that's not actually too much of a problem because I think you could get away with quite easily just slipping in raised and recessed. So just re riveting with recessed, I think you'd get away with it, no problem at all. But as you can see, again, the camera absolutely hates this color clearly. Okay, as you can see, all the details are all here, and that's the thing to this. It's got all the details, nothing is skimped on any of the riveting or anything else like that. You can see the floats have got the lot as well. So actually, that's not too bad. On the inside, as we can see, we do have some options for windows popping out, because obviously it's not shown with it, but other versions probably have the pop-out window in there. Some do, some don't, various things like that, okay? But again, good stuff but we've got ejector pins right the way over the inside of everything there and to say that they're not flush they're not so you might have to do something with that especially if you're going to be adding washes and things onto those ones all right but generally again i think it's all here it makes for a very nice start of a kit and again going in with it eyes wide open as i say it's one of those things where hopefully you know you sort of just go with all the things it's got and run with it okay don't fight it 
So again, another very nice one as we can see down in here. So if we start up here, we've got the engines, which all right, aren't exactly the best, but to be honest, it'd be quite easy to swap them out for some 70 second radial engines if you wanted to. Instrument panel, things like that. Some of the flight deck area, flight yokes, it's all in here just like that. Engine nacelles. You've got those, no problem at all. This back spar, again, fully detailed. It's not skimping on any detail on this, so actually that's very nice as always. The actual flight deck area and the rear, we've obviously, with the molded in scoop underneath, got hella under there, okay, and the wings. And again, millions of rivets, as we would expect, and to be honest, is desired for a change, okay. So yeah, no problem with any of that. And then we've got the actuators down in here. And I have to say, for a kit that, you know, to be honest, it's not new, it is quite old, I think we're all right. There's things you're gonna to have to watch out for. These ejector pins down in here, definitely you wanna take them out because there's no way that's gonna to go together because they are way too proud, okay? And again, it's just got these little tabs at the back for static and stuff like that. Obviously, they're a little bit knocked and things. So you just wanna be careful on that one. Okay, then next up, we've actually got the last sprue, which is the tops of those wings. So if we start on up here, again, beautiful detail right the way through. Okay, on that one. And then we've got some of the details. So we've got some of those ladders, some of the parts for the inside, some of those bulkheads. And again, they're all detailed. It's all right there. We've got the gear. We've got those props, all important props. Okay, we've got the tailplanes. And again... Cameras really doesn't like yellow, clearly. Okay, but there we go. And there's that front end with the gear. Which again, you could easily pull all this up and go right the way through with it. And again, on the blind side, no real problems at all. And even the seats got nice, some detailing on those for the fabric. And again, you just got the odd little ejector pin. But honestly, for a kit, two things. One, Hella, two, 1980. I wouldn't be expecting anything nice at all. But again, this has proven me that Hella in its day did produce some very, very nice kits. And to be honest with you, the detail on that for 1980, I think is absolutely fantastic. Yes, it's all raised, but for once we do want raised detail. This thing realistically has all raised detail. That's why we want to recreate that. So actually that is definitely a plus note for us. And I imagine a lot of modern manufacturers would probably do that all as recessed. Uh, even though it's not. So in some ways, old school is definitely the correct way. You might remember, if you've been watching this recently, I built this little guy, which is a Hella kit, which is the first Hella kit I've built in probably 30 years. Okay, absolutely thoroughly loved it. This thing's got raised details as well. And again, it was a pleasure to behold. So after building that, I thought, do you know what? Let's have a go at something else. So that's why I got in the CL215. An absolute gem of a kit. Classic Hella, classic kit. Actually, very, very nice. So there we go, that's the Hella 172nd Canadair CL215.